What's up guys, Mike here from Meekum Knives, and we're going to continue on with the How to Make a Frame Lock series. Now, this one is going to be a little uh, math heavy and theory heavy, rather than a hands-on doing heavy. That's a lot of heavies. Uh, at the end of this episode, we're going to surface grind this blade and make it nice and flat, but I have to explain why that's important. Why do we do this now? And why do we need to know this before we make the backspacer? It's because it's all relative. If you get this wrong, your action's not going to work right, your blade might not center, and everything's just going to give you a whole bunch of headaches, so this is super important. Now, most of you, and the popular thing right now, are running their folding knives on bearings. These little bearings I get from Alpha Knife Supply. And when you get these little bearings, and that's for the 3 16th pivot, and they're 1 16th balls, and this is just the stainless steel, I don't use the ceramic ones. I don't find them really that necessary. The reason I use the Alpha Knife Supply bearings is because I can get these little washers. Now, those washers are kind of important because the bearings, the balls in the bearings are hardened steel, and they will gall a track in the titanium. So I like to get the most out of my bearings and run them on the hardened steel blade and also the hardened steel washer. Just makes sense to me. The only downside is you got to make room for that washer. Now, there are two ways to do this uh, as far as recessing the pockets in the blade or the handle or both uh, to install these bearings. So I'm going to go over the two ways and which way I prefer. The most common way is this way, and that's where you recess a hole in the knife itself, uh, and that's done with a counterbore. This is a 1330 seconds, which is slightly oversized for an Alpha Knife Supply um, bearing setup, uh, but it's what I could find on McMaster Car, and that's where I got this. And that's a 3 16th pilot on the end for our pivot hole. Now. When you do it this way, you also have to include a pocket in the handle. Right? So you have to recess these two things. I like to, when doing it that way, I like to recess it just enough. Now this washer happens to be a perfect 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So I recess my pockets just enough to where that washer sits flush. As you can see, it kind of disappeared in there. There it is. 20 thousandths of an inch deep. Boop makes the math a little bit easier. So if you're going to do it this way, use that 20,000 steep method. Gives you plenty of room on the titanium. Now, you would then drop on your bearing, like so, and the bearing would ride inside that pocket, which gives you a nice clearance, but not a, a ridiculous gap between the handle and the blade, with nice smooth action and no interference. You see? But there are problems with doing it that way and there's pluses and negatives to everything in knife. Everything's a trade-off of course. My solution to this was to say why don't I just recess the entire hole in the titanium. So instead of cutting a pocket, leave this, and all I have to do is polish this, and the more I polish it, the smoother it will be. I have 100% of the material left, so I don't have to worry about a failure, and I only have to cut one pocket. Titanium has a wonderful property about it, is that it doesn't, it has a, a spring property, so it rather than it cracking and failing, so, I'll give you an example. This is a 40,000th thick piece of titanium, and I'm going to bend it as hard as I can. That's all my strength. It goes right back to flat immediately. That's why we use it for pocket clips and for the spring on the lock bar, because it has a wonderful memory, and it's super tough with a very high tensile strength. Steel has a, a bit of a problem with, in that area when it's hardened, so it's more likely to crack and fail. Now, I'm not really worried about it. The, the, be, the biggest benefit is I save on tool life and I can get a really nice finish on titanium. And even if I did get a crappy finish, it doesn't matter because I'm using that washer. 
Now the one drawback to it, because of course there is a con, the drawback is it doesn't leave me a whole lot of room to sink in my pivot, to recess the pivot. So I'm going to be limited by the time I'm done with this to about 40 thousandths of an inch deep for a pivot and that's really not much considering the pivot itself is probably about 3 sixteenths uh, or 1 8 7 so I'm, I'm going to have to trim the pivot quite a bit so I'm going to lose some of that 3D contouring effect if I'm going to make a fancy pivot or something like that but I'll take the trade off uh, I've been able to achieve a smooth action by doing it this way so don't fix it if it ain't broken right so, okay, now let's get into the math part of it and why we need to surface grind the blade first. So, I'm going to go with this method with no pockets and I'm going to just focus on getting this perfectly flat and getting a nice surface finish on it. Because the we're doing the entire hole in the titanium, we need to sink it in pretty far. So, automatically it's 20 thousandths for the washer and for me I like to have 20 thousandths worth of clearance between the handle and the blade. These bearings, because they're 1 16th balls, measure out to 62.5 or about, so we'll call it 62, 62 thousandths thick. Now I want a 20 thou clearance and I got a 20 thou washer going in so that means I have to sink it down an additional 42 thousandths for the bearing which gives us a grand total of 62 thousandths deep for this hole That's, I wrote it down so 62 thousandths deep and that'll leave me 20 thousandths worth of bearing protruding now for the blade Thickness matters, and when we surface grind this and we'll flatten it, if you're going to use a granite plate, a disc grinder, whatever method you're going to use, get it to your final thickness. And then we're going to make the backspacer based off of this dimension. So right now, mine's, a quick measurement, 170 thou thick in its state right now. But it's not going to stay this way. Uh, after we grind it, let's say we get it down to a 165 or something like that. I'll have to do this math again, but I, let's just assume that this is completely finished. So we have 20 thou protruding on bearings per side, so that's 40 thou automatically getting added to the thickness of this blade. Now at 170 thousandths plus 40 thousandths thick, right there, you can see that our backspacer, if we add the two, is going to have to be 210 thousandths thick to accommodate and equal out and make a nice parallel uh, functioning knife. If I were to make that backspacer way too thin, it's going to taper like this at the back. If I would make it too fat, it's going to taper like this towards the bearing and you're going to have a crappy action. So keep that in mind that whatever your dimension is plus your bearing protrusion per side, in my case 20,000 protrusion on one side, 20,000 protrusion on the other side, plus blade thickness is equal to 210 thousandths and that's the backspacer thickness we need. Conversely, if you do it this method, you have to add in that one other variable of the blade itself having uh, the pocket and if you're going to do it this way, I like to sink the hole in the titanium 20 thousandths deep just to take out the washer variable and then I take out the 42 thousandths out of the blade, the pocket here, which will leave me that 20 thou clearance. Now you can make your clearance number whatever you want, but I seriously suggest that you don't go down to 10 or 5 or 2. Uh, you could do it, but you're going to have to be spot on with your measurements and if you're a tiny bit off your blade's gonna it's gonna show big time uh, in the same in the same breath don't go out you know 70 thousandths because I'll, I'll give you a quick example because this pocket was only recessed 20 grand 20, 20 grand 20 thousandths and there's no pocket in this blade look at that gap that is a uh, that's just ridiculous it's way too much gap 
that's got to be a, a good, well, 62 thousandths. Way too much. My magic number, I like to stay around 20. Okay? So let's surface grind this blade. Use your preferred method. Uh, because it has all this uh, scaling from heat treating, I'm going to hit it on the disc grinder really quick, and then we'll take it to the surface grinder. I like to go in like a circular pattern, like this, just so I'm not favoring one side of the blade or the other, and getting a nice even uh, finish. And I got my granite surface block right up here, right outside of the frame, uh, so I could test it. And all we're doing is cleaning it up like that, just getting rid of that scaling, and then the surface grinder is going to do the rest. First things first, we're going to dress the wheel until it's nice and clean. Going down about a thousandth of an inch per pass. And I'll take several passes until the wheel is nice and clean. You want to always clean off these chucks. And I like to use the palm of my hand because your palm is very sensitive. And you could feel all the fine grit and stuff that's left behind. Sure, you could use a shop rag, and it's a lot of times I do if I don't want to get filthy. Uh, but with my palm, I could verify that there is a nice smooth surface there, that there isn't a single grain of, uh, of the, the disc left, and I'm going to get a nice contact. Also, wipe off your blade itself. Get yourself a nice smooth surface. I'm going to verify the magnet's not on yet. But it's not clicking, clacking around, so it's not way off. I'm going to magnetize my chuck. And we're going to go and do what they call touching off, which means I'm going to approach this on the very edge just until I get contact with the wheel. A part of my very own secret recipe, I like to throw in a little WD-40. Keep things nice and cool. So I'm going to touch off. With the grinder, I'll show you that right now. You always want to be moving when you touch off. I'm going down maybe a half a thousand of an inch at a time. Very slow downward progress. And just on the very edge of the wheel. There we go, I just touched. Uh, you want to barely touch the very edge right there. And now I can go and start doing my pass. So, quick feed. Go over about an eighth of an inch, maybe, with this size grinder. Quick feed. Back and forth, nice and quick. The WD-40 is keeping it cool. There's a little bit right here that wasn't touched. So I'm going to go down about a thousandth of an inch, and I'm going to go back and get it till it's a uniform finish. All right guys, so this is the surface finish straight off the surface grinder. Our blade is nice and flat and parallel now and has a nice smooth finish which we could easily satin this and it's pretty nice off of a, a stone wheel at a hundred and I think it's a hundred ten grit whatever that wheel is if, if I remember I'll link it down below and the WD-40 trick not bad at all now of course guys if I know all of you all of you don't have surface grinders if you don't have one you could do this on a granite surface block no problem it just takes a little longer just like anything else in knife making you're buying efficiency when you upgrade your tooling uh, or if you don't have a disc grinder. If you, all you have is a disc you can do it that way or well, watch my flattening video if you need more tips on flattening but flattening is very important. Flat and parallel is very important. So now our new dimension since we're doing our backspacer math our new dimension looks like a hundred and sixty seven thousandths of an inch thick which means add the 40 thousandths that we're going to leave for clearance, 20 thousandths each side of bearers, bearing protrusion. Uh, that means our backspacer is 167 plus 40 thousandths, 
which would give us 207 thousandths thick, and that's what we need our backspacer to be. So in the next episode, we'll continue on and make our backspacer along with counterboring our holes for the pivot and the bearings. But for right now, this is Mike here from Ecom Knives, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.